Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In War of the Visions, I wanted to make uh, one of my last videos for the game, uh, have it about the future. Think about like uh, game design and the uh, business model, based on some recent releases in uh, JP, War of the Visions, and then the user survey results from the other day. And I made a prediction way back when, might have been around uh, first anniversary, that the developers would base new release character and vision card design around PvP needs uh, for as long as the game could run on revenue from that, and that if and when that revenue dropped off, they would pivot uh, to designing for PvE-focused content. Uh, what I'm wondering is if that pivot is necessary or if it's coming soon, and then would it be even possible to do without killing PvP? The impetus for this video came from me checking various uh, JP YouTube channels and seeing people's reactions to recent stuff like the uh, the dream upgrade and the uh, lower pull rate rush and the chamber of arms and one of the more unique channels I checked is someone from the silent majority uh, that we saw from the user survey results uh, someone who is more casual more interested in the characters and story and PvE solo content and then doesn't really touch PvP at all She's unique because generally the people that cover mobile games are more hardcore, uh, pull more, play at a higher, more competitive level. But the uh, JP communities are more welcoming of casual content creators, so channels like hers can uh, flourish in her little corner of the internet. But I was checking on her views, and in one video, just out of nowhere, she started talking about uh, the topics that I brought up earlier, uh, the future of the game, game design, business model, and I was like, whoa, where did this come from? <laughs> I was not expecting that from that channel. But a lot of thoughts I had rattling around my mind she addressed, and she made some interesting guesses on the possible future of War of the Visions, so that's what inspired me to want to make this video. Uh, this YouTuber had some interesting theories. Uh, she suspects that Reagan, a character that addresses multiple element needs, and the job-based buff vision cards are moves towards a more PvE-focused game design. Uh, I don't agree, at least not now, because I look at the brand new Chamber of Arms content, which is still designed by the same old thinking, and which is clearable by the same old strategies and team comps. Uh, furthermore, the fact that it is clearable with nearly any element highlights characteristics of the design based on PvP, as we have had up to now. Design in the game overall has been very measured in order to keep uh, power creep slow and the, uh, the balance level so that PvP remains dynamic. Lots of different elements and units and team comps are viable, and so there's a lot of breadth and depth to PvP. This slow pace in the design is great for PvP, uh, but not so good for PvE. Uh, what happens is the elements system, which at first I thought would be great for kind of opening up a lot of uh, design possibilities, has actually acted as a limiter in practice. All elements eventually end up being able to do all things, and then all the power levels are fairly consistent across elements. Like, Earth has a reputation for being weak, but really, if all of the other elements are 8s or 9s, Earth is like a 6 or 7, it's not a 2. But like, all elements have evade units, and they all have barrier break and dispel and magic attackers and tanks and etc etc. In the big picture all of the elements are pretty similar. And since the game balance has to be precisely controlled to maintain dynamic, mostly fair PvP, I wonder if the PvE that I want is even possible. Could you release a super tough boss, only beatable by a new release, without that new release being too powerful in PvP as well? Like, let's imagine a new tank release that is close to necessary to beat a new boss, but it's also just so powerful that it upsets the balance of PvP, and the only way to beat it is to use it yourself, and then you have a bunch of mirror matches. Then you would have to design stuff to counter that, and then that would be overpowered, and create a new mirror match environment, and so on. It might get to a point where nerfs are needed, which uh, has never been implemented yet in War of the Visions, and I don't think people would want that. It would, um, you know, make the investment of characters kind of risky. Again, I want to emphasize that I have a lot of respect for the uh, developers, what they have pulled off by creating this very strong uh, PvP environment that's very dynamic. But what happens is that on PvE, they kind of have their hands tied 
because they can only design within a limited power range, uh, both units, vision cards, and uh, quest difficulties. That's three things. <laughs> What discourages me is the Chamber of Arms is pretty well received by the JP community, so I think the developers will be satisfied with that response and then continue to design all of the rest of the chambers uh, the rest of this year in that same way. Uh, the majority of players just don't know what makes for interesting PvE, so they are satisfied with what War of the Visions is giving them. Uh, I am not satisfied, which is part of the reason why I'm leaving the game. And also, I want to play a new game, uh, put up videos of that, which will maybe show uh, what interesting PvE uh, could be. Maybe the most disappointing release to me in the history of War of the Visions is Sakura. Uh, in Brave Exvius, both her standard pool version and Halloween version were so funky in all the uh, different things that they could do. They were Swiss army knives, and it was a ton of fun to find places for them in my uh, teams to get high difficulty content clears. So when they announced Sakura in War of the Visions, I was like, yes, here comes a funky character. So far, the design in the game has been pretty straightforward. Not a lot off of the uh, beaten path, but maybe now we can get some content that requires some different strategies. And she was just another attacker. So yeah, that was disappointing. But more importantly, the direction of design that she signaled uh, was even more disappointing. And I've been kind of blah on the PvE gameplay ever since. I kind of enjoyed selection quests, but just wave after wave of generic mobs and unfun missions like take down three guys at once got old really quick. And uh, the three star Esper fights were fun until EX jobs really took off and then they became too easy and uh, the power creep of the unit strength outpaced the uh, power creep of that quest difficulty. So they just kind of became like chores on the way to awakening Esper's. So, I don't expect a design pivot this year. Reagan and the job-based buff vision cards seem more like solutions in search of problems. But let's imagine what a pivot to a PvE-based revenue stream would look like. Uh, the idea from the developer's point of view would be to release a big bad boss, offer a nice reward for clearing it, and then release some new unit and or vision card that would greatly help in clearing it. Say they do this once a month, and then the folks that want to stay on top of PvE and the content creators that want to make guides for clears uh, would have to pull every month for that new thing. But since, as I said before, all elements can do more or less the same things and are about the same power level, releasing something challenging might not actually motivate people to pull since they would already be able to clear it with what they had. They might have to do like a special element damage or element resistance multiplier so that it would be effectively impossible to say bring a dark unit to like a uh, wind element boss. You must bring ice units or you will take like, you know, five times or ten times the damage. Or they could make it so that you must equip a specific vision cart or else take ten times the damage. But I think we can already see the uh, problems here. <laughs> Like, people that focus their accounts on, like, you know, water, earth, or light would be screwed on this quest. Or say, like, they release a big boss where you must use five Evada units or you can't clear it. How many people could put together that team now without pulling for the new thing? It would be a lot, I think. That wouldn't drive sales. And then, like, you'd have to have the equipment ready as well. So for these reasons, I kind of feel like a pivot to PvE-centric design is not viable business-wise, simply because the bones of the game will not support it. The game really is tied to PvP at this point. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, again, I really respect how well this game does PvP, and for the players that enjoy it, I'm happy for them. But it also cements my decision to leave the game. Although Chamber of Arms does not give me hope, uh, there is still possibilities for interesting PvP in the future, interesting boss or level design where it doesn't matter who you use and I'll repeat this yet again interactive maps and alternate win conditions <laughs> the idea of nightmare quests where you clear the same stage but with different elements is a good one uh, but still the stage design is boring with groups of generic enemies I brought up the uh, Brave Exvius Bahamut uh, boss fight where utilizing the map effectively could lead to a clear and that would be fun to try with different element teams, 
and then maybe based on your uh, progression of different elements, you would have to use different strategies for different elements, and that would be fun, I think. Someone asked me what it would take for me to come back to the game. Uh, it would be PvE content like this, or maps added to the game, preferably in and out of battle. Alright, so to sum up, I don't see a pivot coming. I see the game for at least this year riding PvP as the main driver of sales, uh, which is good if they can keep it up. And I still feel that even without the uh, design pivot, there is room for interesting PvE, uh, but it kind of comes down to whether developers uh, can do that or want to do that. Okay, that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.